So with that said, we are going to move on to the next one. And this was from Friday. I had to bring this game up because I was I was shocked on this. Iowa 54, Maryland 14. Did you see this coming? Yeah. I, so I saw it the other this, way. I'm going I'm to tell you this. If this game wasn't in Maryland and we didn't have the mystique, the voodoo that has been happening on these weeknight uh, home dogs, I, I would have I would have absolutely believed this was exactly this is exactly how I thought this game would go, except for the fact that it was a you know a Friday night game. Yeah, yeah, I, mean, I can I can understand that. If this game had been in Kinnick, I thought there'd be no way. But the the home dogs, the it, just everything about it seemed like, and of course, there's the philosophical shift that I've had in college football over the past however many years, where we've discussed. Good, like great offense beats great defense these days because the rule changes and everything else. The way that teams use space now, I thought that that's how we would get this because it, Talia Tagovailoa, like Baby Tua, had come in as the number two PFF graded quarterback in the country. He had zero. Nobody. He had zero turnover worthy throws, and I understand he hadn't played anybody, but also Iowa had not played an offense like this. So I thought, all right, even if they kind of try and stalemate each other. I still feel like Iowa does not have the explosive playmakers that that Maryland does. I mean, we all know Tyler Goodson's great and everything else, but even that, it, it, was, it wasn't Tyler Goodson by himself in this. It, a lot of this was seven turnovers by the Terrapins. Seven. Hey, uh, your, your stat is wrong. BYU hadn't trailed. Really? I just went, I just went back through all the games. Amazing. Okay, I need to double-check that then. I need to check our, our analytics. Check the check the numbers. Check the numbers. I apologize to to Russell there. So yeah, um, interesting. I'm gonna need to I'm gonna need to go and check and make sure I'm not missing more. But either way, either way, Iowa complete ass whipping. Yep. This was uh this was a a train wreck for Maryland. They thought this was gonna be a big night. You remember they had this again a few years ago, and Penn State came in there and beat them fifty nine to nothing. I mean, it's the same situation. So if I ever bet on Mike Loxley again, I need you to just it, remind me, hey, no, no, you've done listen, this. When they play power teams, they get destroyed. When they play other finesse teams, they can outrun them. Listen, Baby Two is starting to look like Big Brother Two more and more every day. Okay? <laughs> uh, Mike G said at one point, Iowa had more second quarter touchdowns than Maryland had run second quarter plays. That's That's insane. That is so insane. It really is. That was uh, just a disaster on Friday night. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.